U.S. President Joe Biden has apologized to Ukrainian leader Volodymyr Zelensky for delay in military aid to Kiev amid the ongoing war with Russia. I apologize for the weeks of not knowing what's going to pass, in terms of funding, because we had trouble getting the bill that we had to pass that had the money from some of our very conservative members who were holding it up, but we got it done, Biden said during a meeting with Zelensky in Paris on Friday. Biden also announced a new package of $225 million in weapons, including air defense interceptors, artillery ammunition and other critical capabilities to Ukraine. Furthermore, Biden reiterated full U.S. support for Ukraine. I assure you the United States is going to stand with you. We are still in, completely, he told Zelensky. The bilateral meeting follows the D-Day 80th anniversary events in Normandy. Biden in April signed a $61 billion bill to provide Ukraine with military aid. The bill was passed months after Washington said it was out of funds to provide Ukraine with weapons and other military support. The passage of deal was delayed due to dozens of Republican Congress members arguing that the government should focus on domestic problems instead. The Biden administration recently authorized Ukraine to use U.S. weapons to strike targets inside Russia near the two countries' shared border. The meeting between Biden and Zelensky comes weeks ahead of summit of peace in Ukraine to be held in Switzerland. Ukrainian soldiers welcome U.S. President's decision on HIMARS. It is fair to hit bases inside Russia. If Russians are using their weapons in Ukraine, then it should be fair for Kyiv forces to strike Russian territory. It doesn't mean Ukrainian troops are going to use the weapons against civilian targets, just military targets, Ukrainian soldiers who fight in Vovchansk told The Telegraph. In conversations with the newspaper, Ukrainian defenders were unanimous that Joe Biden had now made the right decision, albeit belatedly, to give Ukraine permission to use US-supplied HIMARS to strike inside Russia. They said that Ukrainian commanders knew where key Russian targets across the border were located but had been unable to strike them due to limits on the strikes. Ukrainian soldiers predicted that hitting logistics, air bases, artillery and bases would badly prevent Russians from advancing deeper into Kharkiv Oblast. Since the ban on HIMARS use was eased, Ukraine launched attacks on Belgorod city, used by the invaders as a military base for strikes on Ukrainian objects and civilians. Despite the influx of Western ammunition beginning to reach Ukrainian lines after a lengthy political holdup to US supplies, Ukraine's forces are still heavily outgunned. If we use 10 shells, they send 50 back, said one artillery gunner. He predicted that allowing strikes inside Russia would be beneficial, though he noted that cross-border strikes would likely constitute a small portion of Ukraine's overall targeting. We need to kill Russians so they don't come here. One of the soldiers claimed, Ukrainian troops still face the threat of Russian artillery superiority and glide bombs which can be launched by Russian jets from beyond the range of Ukraine's air defenses. A growing number of European countries, including Britain and France, had already given Kyiv 
permission to use Western missiles against Russian military targets before they had crossed the border. Jens Stoltenberg, the head of NATO, also put rare diplomatic pressure on the White House, declaring that, in light of how this war has evolved, the time has come to consider some of these restrictions to enable the Ukrainians to really defend themselves.